So am I fluent yet? This video is to demonstrate what it looks like to spend one year learning a foreign language, in this case, Spanish. Just over a year ago, I decided to learn Spanish. In the beginning, I wasn't really excited or super in love with the Spanish language. Not sure why, but I think to me it just didn't seem as cool as some of the other languages I wanted to learn because Spanish is really commonly spoken here and I wanted to be different and speak something different or something uncommon, which I don't know, it's dumb. But once I started learning Spanish and really getting to know a lot of the cultures of the 20 countries that speak Spanish, I did fall in love with language along the way. So now I will show you how it went for me, my progress over the last um, 12 months of learning Spanish, and at the end I will talk about how I did it. Hoy es mi primera, o primera día. Um, mm, yo no sé la palabra yo necesito. Yo quiero, uh, yo creo que español es un idioma importante para una idioma segunda. No, no puedo decir todo que quiero decir todo el tiempo. Creo que ahora tengo un poquito de, uh, de intuición sobre el idioma. Cuando adivino, adivino una palabra a veces es correcto. Cuando em empecé a aprender español en el uh, principio, uh, grabé un video um, de mí y cuando lo veo ahora es totalmente diferente en, uh, de cómo hablo ahora en español. Gracias a Dios, no, no estoy tan ocupada como otras semanas en mi trabajo. Al principio de, de la semana um, tuve una vacación en la que um, venía a un, una cabaña, creo, a cabin. A veces no, no sé la palabra que necesito y uh, por otro lado, cuando estoy escuchando algo, a veces hay varias palabras que no, que no conozco. Pero um, la gran parte del tiempo puedo entender más o menos todo que, que escucho. Cuando empecé? este viaje con aprender español. Decidí que después de mucho tiempo dedicarme a aprender como un año más o menos para celebrar mi desarrollo, decidí que sería bueno viajar a México por, para la primera vez en mi vida. Entonces, estoy aquí. Es que cuando estaba leyendo sobre la historia de México como um, la revolución y todo eso, es que me parece súper loco como cada año hay al hubo algo de locura uh, sucediendo sí. en México cada año. Sí, mucho, muchas historias que contar. Ajá. Uh -huh. No tenía la li libertad de viajar en una manera como uh, quería porque no tenía el dinero suficiente, pero ahora tengo el dinero suficiente para viajar, pero no tengo el tiempo suficiente. Oh, es que ella tenía un problema con alguien más ahí en el centro, alguien uh, más que no es parte del centro del centro, pero alguien más que también era mm, residente ahí. Ok, ¿tú qué sabes de Día de Muertos? Así comenzamos. Pues sí he visto uh -huh. Coco, entonces ah, okay. uh -huh. que, uh, las cosas que uh, enseñan en esa película, pero uh -huh. también que 
uh, creo que tú me dijiste que hay varias cosas que puedes um, poner en su ofrenda para uh -huh. ayudar a las almas de los muertes, ¿no? De los muertos, sí, sí, co correcto. Muy cerca del inicio del proceso de aprendizaje, cuando han pasado solamente cuatro o cinco meses, intenté a ver una serie en Netflix en español sin subtítulos en inglés y no podía entender casi nada de, de el, Di diálogo. Pero ahora puedo ver esa misma serie en Netflix y puedo entender casi todo. So, am I fluent yet? First, how do you define fluency? In my opinion, being fluent in another language means that basically you can express more or less whatever you want to express in that language. You might still have grammatical mistakes, you might still have an accent, but you can basically say whatever it is you need or want to say, and any speaker of that language can more or less understand what you're trying to explain. So with that said, no, I wouldn't say that I'm fluent. But with the progress I've made in the last year, I'd say that with one more year of study, yes, I'll probably be fluent. A lot of language learning programs try to sell people on this idea of like, oh, fluent in three months, fluent in six months, fluent in four weeks or whatever. And unfortunately, that's just not realistic. Um, it might sound kind of disheartening to be told the reality that it takes a long time, sometimes years, to be fluent in another language. But if you have that in mind from the start, you're gonna have an easier time staying motivated to keep going. And you can do it, you can reach fluency in another language as long as you keep going. So the tools that I use to learn Spanish. First thing I want to say is there's not going to be one singular resource that's going to teach you a foreign language. Whether that is an app, a book, an audio course, a podcast, there's not going to be just one thing that's going to teach you everything you need to know. In my opinion, the best thing you can do is find lots of resources that work for you and combine them in a way that works best for you. Also, the tools that you use in the beginning stages are going to be different than the tools that you use once you reach an intermediate stage. So I am going to split this up into those two categories. When I was in the beginning stage, these are the resources I used in sort of chronological order. The first thing is a Quizlet set of the 2,000 most common Spanish words. The second thing is the first six chapters of the book Easy Spanish Step by Step. Next is the YouTube channel Dreaming Spanish. Then there is italki, both for paid lessons and finding language exchange partners. Next is the podcast and YouTube channel Español con Juan. And finally, the podcast Language Transfer. People always say that in the beginning you need to be speaking with native speakers as soon as possible. And while I agree with that more or less, you have to have some kind of foundation. You've got to know some words and you've got to know a little bit of grammar so that you can form sentences when you speak with native speakers. So get that stuff down, then start talking to native speakers. That's going to show you the holes in your grammar and the holes in your vocabulary and where you need to focus your attention. Okay, and the resources that I used in the intermediate stages These I will list not in chronological order, but instead in order of how important they were. First up, italki again. So again, for paid lessons and finding language exchange partners. Next is the language transfer podcast again. Next is Anki. It is basically a flashcard app, but it's a lot more powerful than that. It uses a method known as spaced repetition. I take all of the new phrases and words that I learn and put them into my Anki set and study them regularly it works really well for me. Next are podcasts. There are three podcasts that are in this category. At this level, I was listening to a ton of podcasts to just have the language going into my brain and thinking about it and whatever. Um, those podcasts are Español con Juan, again, Learn Spanish and Go, and No Hay Tos. And the final resource in the intermediate category is YouTube. Um, off the top of my head, the ones I can mention are Dreaming Spanish, which I already mentioned before, and then also just different YouTubers. Look up whatever you like to watch in YouTube, but in Spanish. 
In my opinion, the intermediate phase is more enjoyable than the beginner phase because at this point you can hold conversations, you can enjoy consuming media like podcasts, movies, TV shows, and not having to look up every single word anymore. So that's basically how I continued learning once I reached the intermediate stage. I didn't really sit around and study grammar anymore. I used all the resources that I mentioned, but the biggest thing was talking with native speakers, coming across things that were giving me difficulty or things that I couldn't express. And then I would narrow in on those topics, research them, study them, figure it out, and then turn around and use it in these conversations that I was having. And in the same vein, listening to a lot of podcasts and a lot of YouTube videos and a lot of TV shows helped me um, hear certain grammatical structures over and over, hear certain vocabulary over and over. And once you are exposed to it enough times, it'll start to be there when you need to use it in your own conversations. So besides the resources that I mentioned here, there are tons of other resources out there for learning Spanish or any other language for that matter. These are just the resources that I personally used and that I liked and that helped me with my progress.